pray. Um, have you eaten rice today? Okay, um, that's not funny. Um, I know I'm not a prophet, but I certainly know that everyone in this room, if you're excluding your slides are up, the white lady here has eaten rice at least once over the past one week, or even yesterday or the day before. All right, what if I tell you that just 57% of the rice we consume in Nigeria are produced in Nigeria? Well, you don't understand that. Now, if, you eat, if we consume five cups of rice in Nigeria, only three cups of those rice are produced in Nigeria. That means we have to depend on importation to be able to feed or to be able to get the many two cups or else we starve. Now, that's a very big problem because rice is not just very important to economic development. It is fundamental to food security at both household and individual level. It is not an exaggeration to say that there is no single family that doesn't eat rice. Next slide. Now, this is the problem we want to solve. But then before we can solve the problem, we need to look at what is, what is the cause of this problem. Now, 80% of rice produced in Nigeria produced by smallholder farmers. Okay, we have a deficit of 3 million. Next slide, please. 80% of the rice produced in Nigeria are produced by smallholder farmers. Now, smallholder farmers are those that farm at maximum of or less than one hectare. The implication is that we have a lot of people that are farming rice, but they are farming it individually. And as a result of that, they don't have the capacity to negotiate. Now, every business person understands that the higher you produce, the larger the quantity you produce, the lower the unit cost. Little wonder, it is very, very, it is cheaper to import rice than to buy rice from Nigeria. Now, how do we want to solve this problem? Our solution is simple. It's called agribusiness cluster. By agribusiness cluster, what we, what we are doing is to put farmers together in at least in a cluster of 100. Now, when 100 farmers are farming an hectare each, that is 100 hectares of land. Now, when you have a 100 hectares of land, you can walk up to a tractorization company and say, look, we have 100 hectares of land. Please come and tractorize our farm. Now, the farmers can, may not be able to afford the tractor, but 100 of them come together, they can be able to have their farm tractorized at a very discounted rate. With 100 hectares of land, you can walk up to supply a fertilizer supplier and say, look, we have 100 hectares worth of, 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 um, of rice. We need a fertilizer for that. And with that capacity, you can negotiate and get fertilizers for farmers at a very discounted rate. Once you have done with production, the next thing is once farmers are together, it is very, very easy to give them training and capacity building than to be moving from one, from one farmer's farm to another. It's also very easy to walk up to a, a big rice mill and look, I say, look, we have a rice, we have rice farmers, and we want you to fund, inject money into this project so that at the end of the day, you'll be able to get this social quantity of rice. Now, farmers don't just go to the, the farmers in our cluster don't just go to the farm to farm any kind of rice because we have already have an understanding with the people that are going to buy. That's a ready, a ready market that they can access. They, they know exactly what variety to farm. So we have provided access to input, we have provided access to finance, we have provided access to technical services, and we have provided access to market. Now with this in place, production will be increased, profit will be maximized, and, and then the price of production will drop down and then you'll be able to afford rise. And above all, we may not have to depend on, we may not have to have a deficit of 300 million of our, of our annual demand. So, this is our solution, just as I explained. We aggregate, we support, we of take from them. Next slide, please. Now, our, our revenue model, number one, when I want to work with these farmers, we of take this body from them, and then we sell them. Of course, we make sure that since the farmers in our network are already business people, they are not just farmers, but they are farmers doing business. We have run a spreadsheet. We have done an accounting. We know the cost of their production. And at the end of the day, they say, look, this is your profit. And everything is clear. Then the farmers know what they are getting. And the company also know what we are getting as a commission. Then we 
currently what we are doing also, we have taken this rice and also package it in our own brand name, a, a stone-free clean Nigeria rice. And then finally, we provide charges for the services. Farmers, farmers who are empowered and who have seen that their production is going to improve, definitely will want to have uh, want to pay charges to be able to get those services. Now, how what is our journey so far? We are currently working with 1,000 rice farmers cluster in the plateau state, and then we have been able to provide these services and and for them. Next slide, please. And this is our rice brand, Ajaoko. What, what is the market? For the past, over the past um, uh, less than 10 years, the, the, the demand for rice has been increasing astronomically, as we can see. Now, it is, it is projected that in, two, in 2026, the revenue from rice will go as high as 6, as 6, um, as 6 million US dollars. This is in US dollars. This shows that demand exists. If a vibrant farmers and private sector can be aggregated and be empowered to service it. Next slide. Okay, that's me. My name is Nicolas Alpha. I have a background in food science and technology. I have a master's in food processing and technology, currently doing a PhD in food technology. I'm an agribusiness entrepreneur, and I have been trained by the International Institute Center for Agribusiness Management at ICRA, and also have taken a um, emerging agribusiness, emerging entrepreneurship in emerging economy, where we understand the dynamics of businesses in, in Nigeria, just aside from Harvard Business School. Thank you for listening.